Now, I made this comparison of what if Gohan turned Super Saiyan 2 today, if Dragon Ball Z was aired today, would people hate Gohan, right? And people told me, oh, it's different, man. The power gap is not as crazy as it was in Dragon Ball Super, where you have Goku being able to destroy the microcosm and all this stuff. Like, and I get it, right? It's a big power from seeing the beginning of Dragon Ball Super, where you have Goku going Super Saiyan God, and he's able to fight Beerus. Then we go to the point now where he's in Ultra Instinct. And in the anime, he has statements saying he's a past Beerus, whatever, whatever. But you have Gohan, who was put in, like, knocked the hell out when he fought Frieza at the beginning. And then, like, he was training with Piccolo for a little minute. After that, didn't get to join the Universe 6 tournament. Then he trained again with Piccolo. Then got his ultimate form, was able to compete with Blue. People say that's so crazy. But when you think about Z, right? One, Gohan from the jump, no training because his mom didn't want him to train, was able to surpass both Goku and Piccolo, who was the strongest guys in the original Dragon Ball run before, well, granted, Dragon Ball continued all the way to Z, but in terms of Dragon Ball anime, he was able to surpass them like that as a, like as a toddler, right? Just like that. And then, I'm not even going down the entire Saiyan Saga or Frieza Saga, but people like to say, hey, man, look, it was just great writing, right? And it was a lot of payoff, right? But we just have all these, like, Gohans, like, training with Piccolo slightly and stuff. But then we go to the Cell Saga. You got to remind yourself, at the beginning of the Cell Saga, we have future Trunks coming in and destroying Mecha Frieza and King Cold. And Gohan, at that moment, can't mess with none of those guys and he trains with goku and piccolo but he didn't unlock super saiyan or anything like that and his future counterpart who turns super saiyan after the death of goku and piccolo he's not competing with the androids but we have vegeta and trunks who both train the hotbox time chamber get super saiyan great two and three and cannot mess with perfect cell right and in the anime, we get a lot more scenes of Goku and Gohan training. But in the manga, it's like a few pages here and there. And out of nowhere, both Goku and Gohan are stronger than, Go uh, stronger than Vegeta and Trunks. It makes sense with Goku because Goku's already stronger than like Trunks at the beginning of the arc. And Vegeta has a moment where he, he, he could have been just as strong or surpassed him. And Goku was sick. So him training the Hobbok Time Chamber, you would think that he would either be just as strong as him or better. But Gohan was weaker than everybody there and was a child. But yet, he's the one who's able to compete and get Master Super Saiyan and already be stronger than them. This is before getting Super Saiyan 2, right? And then, when the Cell Saga happens, when he fight, the Cell games happen, when he fighting Cell, Gohan is stronger than Super Saiyan Goku. <laughs> and then Gohan could have actually, a lot of people imply that Gohan could have beat Perfect Cell even without going Super Saiyan 2 because he didn't want to, he didn't want to fight him. But he goes Super Saiyan 2 unlocks his brand new transformation and he's one-shotting cell juniors now let's think about it he goes from weaker than probably android 19 actually he is weaker than android 19 all those people but yet one hop out time chair that we've barely seen in the manga and he's stronger than everyone in just super saiyan and he's the youngest super saiyan to ever exist and you think niggas would not be complaining to this day because people are complaining about beasts and everything which i understand right but we're not going to act like that wild jump from not being able to compete with androids to one hop out time chamber and then doing better than both Goku, Vegeta, and Trunks. And get ready to get the guidance of Goku, but he was better with Master Super Saiyan than Goku. And he was the one to unlock Super Saiyan 2 first. And he dog walked everyone, right? But your nostalgia and you being a kid and being able to buy into it made it easier for you to soak that in. Hell, even the Boo Saga. We, you know, it wasn't as bad as in Resurrection F how much he lost his power, but Vegeta was giving him crap, whatever. And funny enough, his his power up in the boost arc is actually more reasonable because he was still able to go Super Saiyan 2. He probably could still compete with Super Saiyan 2, Goku, and Vegeta. But then he's just sitting there training with the Z Sword, which doesn't really do too much. It's like a placebo effect. But he's he's just sits there waiting for Okai to unlock his powers and then he's able to go from like Super Saiyan 2 Goku level who was fighting Majin Vegeta even though he was weaker and then surpass all of them and be able to beat Super Buu and even in the anime be able to compete with Buu takes a little bit before losing the fight so that jump is crazy but it's nothing compared from going from weaker than androids and being like a little kid to going to the hot body time chamber and then being better than both Vegeta, Trunks, and Goku at Super Saiyan that you unlocked. And then being the first one to unlock Super Saiyan 2 and surpassing everyone by a wide margin. Now, I'm not trying to excuse any of this stuff. I just know that this is consistent with Gohan's character. If you're going to introduce Goku's son and then 
frame one, he is stronger than Goku as a child. You got to get used to it, bro. I'm not going to mention all the times in the Frieza saga where he's over, he's able to overpower second form Frieza, third form Frieza, all this stuff. We're not going to even mention all that, right? Now, at least in Dragon Ball Z, they took attempts to show you Gohan's training with Piccolo multiple times. And in the moral arc, he also trained with Piccolo as well. Right? And the only problem is, is that they keep saying that Gohan's been training, but then you learn in the superhero movie, he was training to learn special cannon by himself without Piccolo's help. So it's like different types of training. But regardless, I'm getting comments saying like, it, cause it makes no sense, whatever. I understand when you're dealing with something where you're going from like solar system to galaxy level in Dragon Ball Z, then like the, from the jump, you jump to universal and everyone's eventually catching up over time to keep up with Goku and Vegeta. I get it that you want all this super training stuff. But to be honest with you, we, we all had it everyone's way. Everyone be going through a God ritual. Hell, I remember I thought Piccolo was gonna go through a God ritual and all this other stuff. I get it. And the biggest annoying thing ever was in the Granola arc where you had the, 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 the Shenron that was two Dragon Balls and people sacrificing life force to surpass Goku and Vegeta, right? That was the most annoying thing for me. But when you have a character who has consistently done crazy stuff like this, and even in the chapter 103, Goku says, you're the only person I know who can do these amazing jumps. And we're not going to even mention, we have Frieza who just started training and his potential is so crazy that he's able to compete with Super Saiyan Blue Goku. He went from getting molly by Super Saiyan uh, Trunks from the Frieza, uh, from the, well, the Android arc with his Mega Frieza. Then he goes from that to overpowering Super Saiyan Blue Goku. He just has bad stamina. And then... Train the Hobbok time chair for 10 years. And he's able to beat Ultra S and Goku and Ultra Ego Vegeta in one fell swoop. And then you have Broly who goes from like barely being able to overpower like base Vegeta to like damn near competing with Gogeta Blue. And if he was able to master his abilities, we get statements saying that he could have beat Gogeta Blue, right? Now, people are going to complain about writing, but honestly, y'all don't care about Gogeta. Y'all don't care about Broly and Freezer because y'all think they're cool. It just, I think it's like a hyper thing on Gohan because he's had moments of showing how much him not training affects his power. But at the end of the day, he's been training more in Super that he's been training did it in, in throughout Dragon Ball Z, to be honest with you. <laughs> like him training from the Terminal Power and up is more training than he did for all of it except the Cell Saga, believe it or not. If you can accept Gohan from the beginning of the Cell Saga, not even being able to compete with like the androids and he's just like a little kid, like they got to protect. And then, because even though he trained with Goku and Piccolo, it wasn't that crazy, bro. He wasn't competing with them at all. But then he goes from that, and then he trains the Hobbit Time Chamber for one year, and he surpasses Goku Trunks and Goku in one fell swoop. If you can accept that, bro, then congrats to you, bro. But if we have Gohan, who's still able to use Ultimate, all this other stuff, and he, see Go and he sees Piccolo almost die. And hell, even the moral art, more even mentions that he got a power up when he saw Goku almost die. He just didn't unlock the beast form. And people will say, why did Gohan didn't unlock the beast form when he saw Goku? I'm like, it's the same reason why Goku didn't turn Super Saiyan when he saw Krillin die um, in the Dragon Ball arc where uh, one of King Piccolo's minions killed him. It just wasn't time, bruh. All right? It just is what it is there. So that's my statements on this whole people being mad about this stuff. Again, it's okay if you feel that way. But all I'm saying is it's consistent. That's all I'm saying. So hope you enjoyed this video. Somehow I made this eight minutes. Didn't really mean to. It was supposed to be short. But yeah, son, TJ out. Peace. Love you all.